Hi, I'm Rick Bayless, and I've been exploring, cooking, and eating in Mexico for over 40 years. Now I'm taking you to Mexico City for a deep dive into the classic dishes you've asked to learn. It's time to share my best recipes ever. Did you ever have the opportunity to have an honest to goodness carnitas taco? I mean, one where the meat is cooked slowly in its own fat, con V style, basted with all that richness and till it's completely golden and delicious looking. But well, that's what I've got here because I'm at Los Panchos. And Los Panchos has been here since 1945, making these incredible carnitas tacos. And they do it in that old-fashioned, traditional style, whole animal cooking, which means everything goes into the pot. And then when you order your taco, you get to choose between masisa, which is firm meat, or what in the United States we call meat, and surtido, which is the combination of that firm meat with assorted other bits. So it could be the fatty bits, it could be some skin, maybe some of the innards that have cooked slowly alongside all of that meat. When you get this, splashed with a little salsa, onions, cilantro, a little of that crunchy chicharron you can ask for to go on the top of it, you've got an honest to goodness carnitas taco. There are restaurants, of course, that specialize in carnitas, but some markets do too. I've been coming to this stall at the Medellin market for years and years, and on the weekends, on Saturdays and Sundays, they make carnitas. It's connected to one of the best butchers here, so the whole thing makes a whole lot of sense. This guy starts at four o'clock in the morning, melts the lard, and then puts the raw meat in there to cook slowly, and he's doing it in a huge copper cauldron. Now, copper is used by most of the people that make carnitas because they want that slow, even heating that copper gives for the long-term cooking. And then out comes all of this beauty here. The firm meat, the macis is on the front. On the back, you get all the skin and the innards that are cooked along with it. And when you chop all of that skin, the innards, and the firm meat together, it is so delicious. You'd be amazingly surprised, even if you're not one of those kind of innards people, how delicious this is. So you can buy stuff to take out from here, or you can get little tacos and then go over to this beautiful bar of condiments that they have a couple of salsas and onion cilantro, pico de gallo, pickled onions, the whole shebang. This is such a fun place to, to buy carnitas and to enjoy them. Señor, por favor, me gustaría un kilo de carnitas surtido, por favor. So people are always asking me when they eat carnitas in Mexico or any other pork dish, why the pork tastes different? And here's the reason. In the United States, we really bred the pork to be incredibly lean. That was a marketing strategy that happened um, several decades ago. But in Mexico, they like that luscious taste and texture of the pork. So if you're looking for that old fashioned pork flavor in the United States, my suggestion is, you look for a local farmer in your area that is doing the heritage breed pork because that'll give you that richer and fuller flavor. Now that 
is a carnitas feast. But what I'm gonna tell you next may really surprise you because I'm not in Mexico anymore. I'm actually in Chicago at a place called Carnitas Uruapa. This place opened back in 1975, over 40 years ago. And Señor Carvajal emigrated from Uruapan, Michoacán, a place that is incredibly famous for making great carnitas, and set up shop here in Chicago. But the coolest thing about this place isn't just that the carnitas taste good, but they also respect all of the traditions that go into great carnitas making. The pig is broken down by hand into individual cuts, and yes, they use all parts of the animal. The pork is placed into giant stainless steel kettles filled with hot pork fat. And in traditional Uruapan style, they cook the carnitas slowly for over two hours. Now when the carnitas come out of the kettle, they're beautifully golden brown, crispy on the outside, tender and juicy on the inside. Chopped up and placed on a fresh made corn tortilla, I'm sure there's nothing better. You're going to be amazed at how easy it is to make carnitas at home. In fact, I've got a, a couple of different approaches to share with you. The first one uses the slow cooker. It's going to be a, a kind of reverse carnitas because we're going to cook the pork slow first and then brown it at the end. I have some pork shoulder here. It's boneless. And the first thing that I need to do is to season it. So I'm going to sprinkle it nicely with salt over one side flip it all over and season the other side. Then I'm going to fit these pieces of the pork shoulder into the slow cooker and it should basically fill the bottom but there need to be some gaps in here. Then I'm going to pour over this melted fresh rendered pork lard which is essential for making classic carnitas and it should barely, barely cover the meat in here. Put the top on here and then set the slow cooker for four hours on high and the meat should be tender. Now while the slow cooker version of carnita submerged in the pork fat is cooking away over there, I'm going to show you a different kind of carnitas that's really a braised and roasted carnitas. I'm using pork country ribs, which is one of my favorite cuts. You'll have to ask a butcher for it. It's several different muscles all together, but a piece of bone on one side, and that bone will certainly add a lot of flavor to the finished carnitas. So the first thing that I need to do with these pieces of pork country rib is to sprinkle salt on them and I'm going to flip them over and salt the other side. And then drizzle in a little bit of water. I think I have about two thirds of a cup, just enough to cover the bottom of this baking dish. Then cover that whole thing with a piece of foil. And we're ready for the first step of cooking, which is to bake them for about an hour at 375 degrees. After one hour, the meat should be very tender. Now the next step is to turn the oven up to 450 degrees and put the meat back in uncovered until all those juices evaporate. That should take about 30 minutes. It smells so much like carnitas in here. Anytime you have that pork fat doing that, I'm gonna uncover it, it's a hot lid here. Set that down and then fish out these pieces of pork. They're completely tender now. Now this part of the carnitas making can be done ahead, but the following step 
is what you want to do right before you serve. I have a big cast iron skillet, the heavier the better for this kind of cooking. Um, and I'm going to take a little bit of the pork fat from the cooking of the carnitas enough to just skim the bottom of that pan and then I'm going to lay these pieces of tender pork in and brown them so that they have that traditional and incredibly delicious browned exterior that we all associate with carnita. This is gonna be quite a feat. So for the last few minutes of the cooking after the liquid had evaporated out, I turned these a few times so that they got evenly browned on all sides. The carnitas that we slow cook submerged in the pork fat are beautifully browned. Our braised and roasted carnitas are ready. And you know what I want to go with this? What I always want to go with carnitas? Guacamole. You don't so much need a good recipe for guacamole as you need a good understanding of how to make guacamole. Obviously, it starts with the avocado, and the better the avocado, the better the guacamole. You cut around the pit, twist the two sides apart, then you've got to get the pit out. I do that with the end of my knife. And because these are Haas avocados, I can scrape straight up against the skin and it won't tear or break. Then we need to season this avocado. It has very little natural acid, so we're going to add a little bit of fresh squeezed lime juice, but not too much. Too much lime juice will kill the flavor of the avocado. Now we're gonna add salt to it, and then mash the avocado with the salt and the lime. I'm using an old-fashioned potato masher because I like chunky guacamole. Now the four ingredients that go into a classic guacamole are the same ones that go into pico de gallo or salsa mexicana. It's tomatoes for sweetness, chilies for spice, cilantro for herbiness, and onion I have rinsed onion here to get away some of the strong flavors, but that's added for crunch. You add each one to the seasoned mashed avocado base to suit your own taste. Give it all a stir. Then give it a taste to make sure that there's enough salt and lime. And the guacamole is ready. So I tore both kinds of carnitas into large pieces and piled them on a platter here, served with the guacamole. I had a little pico de gallo, some warm tortillas, and now's the moment to set this out and let everyone help themselves. Now, if you wanna make a really cool version of carnitas, make duck carnitas, and you make them out of duck legs. So I've got uh, nine by 13 
glass baking dish. That's actually what I prefer to do this first step in. And we're gonna cure these. It's a very light cure. It's not a wet brine, but what we would call a dry cure. And I'm gonna very evenly cover this duck with two teaspoons of salt. It needs to be a measured amount. Next, I'm gonna sprinkle over a little Mexican oregano, about a teaspoon or so, just all over this. This will give this a beautiful flavor. And lastly, because this is a Mexican version of a dish that you might know as duck confit, I'm gonna put some lime, which will really perk up all of the flavors. Okay, now I'm gonna flip everything over and give the same seasonings on the other side. Everything but the lime. Now for this cure to do its job, we'll take eight to 12 hours minimum. To tell you the truth, I like to let these rest overnight. So I'm gonna cover it with plastic wrap, slide it into the refrigerator, and let the cure work. After as little as 12 or as much as 24 hours, the brine will have changed the texture of the duck meat. Now the next step is to dry off each piece of meat, then lay them into another baking dish along with some halved garlic cloves. Finally, cover the duck in fat. Now, I'm using fresh rendered pork lard here, melted in the microwave, but duck fat works just as well. Then slide those duck legs into a 300 degree oven for slow cooking. When you're gonna put onion into a salsa or guacamole, I always recommend that you do what they call deflaming it in Spanish. Desflemando la cebolla. Usually I recommend that you chop up the onion and you rinse it under cold water. I'm gonna show you another way to do that with this red onion that I'm chopping up right now. This onion I'm going to scoop into a bowl and then squeeze lime juice over the top of it. The acid from the lime will help to take away that sort of nagging bite that a lot of people don't like about using raw onions. I'm gonna stir all of that together and then let that set. It'll take about 10 minutes or so for the acid to do its job. And I'm gonna use that chopped and deflamed red onion in this sort of modern salsa that I'm making. It's an avocado and mango salsa. So let's talk mangoes to begin with. There are many different kinds of mangoes that you'll see in your grocery store. My personal favorite is the one that's all yellow and it has this sort of classic mango shape to it, but it's flat, it's not uh, round. Now all mangoes are what they call cling pits. So you have to work with them in a certain way. So I'm gonna first peel this and then I'll show you how to cut the flesh off of the mango seed. Now once you get it peeled, you'll want to stand it up. This is the way that I like to do it the best. And then put your knife at the top and then gently cut down about a half an inch away from the center. That will allow you to cut that flesh off of the seed. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side here and then just turning it a little bit and cutting from this side. So 
there are four more ingredients that are going to go into this mango salsa. One is cilantro, the other is mint, which I think is just delicious with mango. I've got some red chilies here. If you find red jalapenos, I suggest that you use them. I have red fresnos here, which are also really delicious, and some avocado. All I need to do is cut all this stuff up. Also, we'll certainly need some salt, so I'm going to add that to it. So I'm gently stirring it, breaking up the pieces of avocado so that they're thoroughly mixed in with everything else. It is so good, that mint with the mango. That bit of avocado, the spice from the red chili, and the crunch from that red onion. I think it's perfect. So after a couple of hours in the oven, I pulled out that baking pan of duck legs bubbling away and beautifully golden. I've let them cool for a little bit, and now I'm pulling all the meat off of the bones. But first, before touching any of that meat, I'm pulling off the skin part of it. So I like to loosen it all the way around like that, and then you can just lift the skin off completely because that's going to be the garnish for little duck carnitas tacos that I'm going to make. Then you can tear the two pieces apart, the thigh and the leg, and start to pull off the meat from the bone just like that. And we are ready to go to the next step. Now I've heated a pan here over medium to medium high heat and I'm going to add a little bit of the fat that we cooked the duck legs in, enough to kind of heavily coat the bottom of the skillet. And the first thing that I'm going to do is to crisp the duck skin a little bit more. those look really beautiful. Now in batches I am going to brown our duck carnitas just giving them a little crispiness on the outside and reheating them. Now to make the tacos. So I'm going to lay a couple of beautiful fresh corn tortillas here on this plate and then pile on some of the crispy duck carnitas with their skin. Like that. Then we have our mango and avocado salsa. To just spoon over the top like that. Since these are very special tacos that we didn't just throw together, I'm going to take some of these little mint leaves and garnish the top of them like that. So we've gone all the way from the simplest homemade pork carnitas to spectacular duck carnitas with a modern salsa fit for the most special occasion.
Okay, so I fired up your appetite. Some of my favorite dishes, entertaining tips, and Mexican travel inspirations. Well, now I want to hear what you have to say. Visit us at rickbayless.com slash TV for recipes and a whole lot more.